Maybe you're so burnt out right now because you haven't been relying on the spirit of God. You are now listening to the Paging Dr. Shonda podcast, where we talk all things related to mental health, life lessons, and the culture. My goal is to help each and every listener pursue and center wellness. I'm your host, Dr. Shonda, licensed clinical psychologist. Now let's get into it. Somebody say it's the confidence for me. It's the confidence for me. I need you to say it confidently. Say it's the confidence for me. It's the confidence for me. It's been brought here and forced into slavery. Um, and based on those traumas that we experienced during slavery, some of those same behaviors, the attitudes, um, you know, the belief systems that we adopted as slaves can be passed down to generations after that. Um, and that is why we see like the hyper. Yeah, amen. You're a treasure, um, Dr. Shonda Reynolds. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I'm just shutting up and listening. I'm learning so much. And we are back with another week of the Paging Dr. Shonda podcast. I'm so grateful to have you here today. This week, we are welcoming in a new year. Uh, It might feel weird for a lot of us. We have a lot of emotions that typically uh, surround this time of year. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. But before we do that, y'all know what time it is. I always like to give a special thank you to my supporters, to you, you and you, everybody who's listening to the audio podcast as well as the visual podcast. I certainly couldn't do this without you. So I truly want to thank you. So I'm giving a shout out to you. I also want to give a shout out to some of the reviews that I've been getting since we launched the podcast. I'm very excited about it. Y'all, listen to this. Okay. Anything Dr. Shonda is on, I'm in, period. It's from The Intimacy Firm. I love her. That is my sis, Brittany Brodus. Thank you so much, Brittany, for your review. Um, someone with the name Furtherance. I'm not sure who you are, but thank you so much for the review. Uh, the, this podcast exact is exactly what the doctor ordered. Dr. Shonda is a brilliant mind with a passionate heart. This podcast will help millions. Great job. Listen, I received that. This podcast is going to help millions. That is literally the vision. That is the mission for this podcast. And I strongly believe it. And I thank you for that affirmation. Stop what you're doing and listening now. Inspiring and informative. This podcast is a must listen to weekly. Pick yourself up and get in gear. Can't wait for the next episode. Thank y'all so much. I have been following you for years. Finally, a podcast. I'm excited. Your guidance, words, and encouragement definitely get me through those tough days. Thank you. Listen, I am so grateful for y'all. I cannot... I cannot express enough how much uh, your support means to me. Thank you for the numbers. Thank you for those of you who are listening on the audio podcast platforms. Thank you for those of you who are watching on the YouTube. I certainly appreciate you. And if you want to do something to help with this podcast and to get the message out there, all you have to do is share it. You can just click the link, um, the shareable link, whether it's on YouTube or some other audio platform, and share that link to your friends, your families, whoever. You can also post it in your story. Make sure you're tagging me. A few people have posted and forgot to tag me but make sure you're tagging me so that i can repost you into my story again y'all i am appreciative y'all it has been a hectic week just to give you an update so typically i pre-record my podcast i don't do them and uh edit and post the same exact day but during the last episode i did the holiday episode and i said i wanted to be present i can't wait to go home with my family talking about my aunt's christmas cookies all that stuff y'all guess what I was in quarantine on Christmas, literally locked away in my apartment. Um, It was fun because I had my twin sister and I was cooking and I haven't been able to cook in such a long time. But so that aspect was fun, but it was very different for not being able to be a part of my family tradition. So um, when I talk about these things related to like COVID and how it's different for a lot of us, I'm not just speaking off of like what the science says and what the research says. Now I'm talking off of experience. Like I, I've experienced this and it's it's it was it was a different holiday. I'll say that. I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to have experienced it. And also it was different. Uh so that's my life. Um also, y'all, I've been busy. This podcast has been keeping me busy. I appreciate y'all for listening and tuning in week by week. I really do. But I really just want to give a special shout out to anybody out there who is an audio engineer or a visual editor or video editor because I did your job last week. And I can promise you, it's not easy. It ain't easy at all, y'all. Like I literally spent about two, three hours editing my audio podcast and then another two or three hours editing the video. Um, So taking a lot of work and putting in a lot of uh, effort and work into getting this podcast up and going 
And y'all, I, I can, I promise you, I can, I can reassure you this. Anybody out there who's into the content creation, video editing, audio editing, like this is stuff I had to learn within 30 minutes just to uh, go on YouTube, YouTube. Okay. How do you use this platform in order to edit a podcast? And I had to do it right quick. So y'all have my, uh, I have a different level of respect for people who do this for a living. Uh, so y'all, I love y'all. Y'all are in my thoughts and prayers. So I'm going to go ahead into our hot off the press segment, y'all. This is the segment where we talk about mental health news. We talk about things that are in the media that has to do with our mental wellness. Now let's go. Every year, more than 50% of people make New Year's resolutions to lose weight, quit smoking, work out, save money, get a promotion, get a raise, and more. And yet virtually every study tells us that around 80% 80% y'all, like just wrap your head around that. If we have about 100 people in the room, 80 of them people uh, and New will abandon their New Year's resolutions around February, March. So 80 people abandoning their resolution around February, March. Uh, so in fact, one study found that gym sales dropped from January to February. So after we sign up at the end of December, we start maybe in January and then we stop around February, March. Now, I'm not saying this because I've kept every single resolution that I made. And I'm not even going to say resolution because I know um, a lot of us, we don't believe in resolutions. Uh, even though some people might not believe in resolutions, I do believe in setting goals for yourself and wanting to make behavioral change. And what better time of year to do that than the new year? Like we're stepping into something new. Right? So I've done that. I've been there. I wrote down the resolutions. I did that. And yet I still didn't follow through with them. I'm a part of that 80% is what I'm saying. I want y'all to put in the comments. Let me know if you are in that 80% because there's a lot of 80 percenters out there. But sometimes we might feel alone. We might feel as though, you know, I'm, I, I'm in this by myself. I'm the only one who hasn't kept their resolution because we might see people being successful and following through with some of the resolutions that they made. But you're not alone, 80 percenter. I'm an 80 percenter too. Going back to the article. Uh, so why do New Year's resolutions fail? One big reason is that we are often, we often weren't all that emotionally committed to the goal in the first place. Y'all, this is Forbes saying this. Forbes, the, the, the multi-million business platform, Forbes. They're talking about how you have to be emotionally connected in order to pursue a financial goal, in order to pursue a business goal, in order to pursue a health-related goal. They're saying this isn't just something that you just do. People think you can just jump into it, but there has to be some level of emotional commitment. And again, I say this is Forbes saying this, like a, a business platform, right? They, they're not even in the mental health wellness space, but they're seeing the, the importance of us having this connection, the emotional connection with this, uh, with our resolutions. So before January 1st is a pretty arbitrary day for half the population to start a new goal, it makes sense that many of us didn't feel any real drive to start the goal on that particular day. In fact, a lot of us actually feel peer pressured into making a goal for the new year. Has anyone ever felt peer pressure just because it's January 1st is approaching? My peers are setting goals around me. There are people in my family who are setting goals. There are people in my, my ministry, my church. There are people at my job. My colleagues are setting New Year's goals. I need to set a goal too. Y'all see my face. Now, what is the likelihood of us actually following through with a goal if we are only doing it because of the people around us? That's what Forbes is saying. Not Dr. Shonda, not nobody else. Like That's what the Forbes is saying. You're not alone if you're an 80 percenter. 80% of stand up, like, gang, gang, what's good? Like, we're, we out here, we out here. Not saying we're going to stay out here, but we, we just saying, like, this is where we at right now. We're going to jump straight into the topic. Today's topic has a lot to do with the Hot Off the Press segment. New Year's resolutions goals are basically making those behavioral changes for the new year. How we can set goals for ourselves and actually commit to them. Like I said to y'all, I've been an 80 percenter, and I'm not saying this out of like looking down on anybody. I'm saying this because I want to help. Now, first of all, my YouTubers get into this jacket because the ponytail was covering the label, but this is the Plastics New York. I love my plastic jacket made by my best friend, Javon James. Thank you so much, Javon, for this jacket. All right, we're going to get back into the topic. 
Um, the glitter was just distracting me. It, was so, it looked so good. The time of year where people make goals related to our career. We make goals related to our finances. We make goals related to family, emotional goals. Lots of different categories in which we develop goals. But we just read in the article that 80% of individuals who make these goals do not keep them. When it comes to goal setting, when it comes to changing the way I'm doing things or to set a goal and to actually accomplish it, it's more than just writing it down and trying to follow through with it. If I have a financial goal, if I have some sort of health related goal, if I have some sort of emotional goal, these goals are going to require me in order to make some sort of behavioral change. Now, granted, we talk, y'all probably going to hear from now until the first week of January, smart goals, everybody's making smart goals. And I get it, y'all. I, I got some segments out there too on a couple of uh, news platforms where I'm talking about smart goals. They're actually not bad ways to make changes, right? Because we have to start with that behavioral foundation. But that's not where we stay. We don't stay with just making the behavioral changes. That's where a lot of people fail. I can tell you all the smart goals. I can tell you all the behavioral change strategies in the world. Motivational interviewing, which is something that I like to do with my clients who have a hard time with behavior change. Uh, you know, CBT, like all these different behavioral things that we can do. That's great. That's fine. That's dandy. And if you learn it, it's amazing, right? Very powerful tools. But if I'm not changing the foundation, the reason why I'm doing this and who I'm consulting when I'm doing this, the changes are going to be lasting. So for today's topic, we're going to be talking about changing without the changer. Changing without the changer. What do you mean, Dr. Shonda? I'm glad you asked. So turn to, and I know we ain't in church, but y'all know I'm churchy a little bit. Uh, we're going to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. If you have your Bible, say amen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All of this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us ministry of reconciliation. Y'all, the whole Bible is about reconciliation and change. We're intended to continue to behave in ways that aligns with the flesh. We're always supposed to be in a, a state of changing in order to pursue godliness and that is the foundation of christianity to to repent to turn from and to turn to to change there's absolutely nothing wrong with making changes there's absolutely nothing wrong with wanting to improve in your overall being but there is a problem with wanting to change without consulting the changer now we just read here that jesus christ is the only way in order for us to experience true change whether that's behavioral change, emotional change, mental change, career-related change, financial change. The only way for us to experience newness and to be that new creation that the Bible was speaking of is through Jesus Christ. That means that when I sit down and write my goals, when I make a, what we call resolutions, or when I try to, to create goals for whether they're natural or spiritual, if I try to do this without consulting the changer, I'm failing to honor God. I'm failing to include him in the entire, in the, the totality of my life. I'm failing to acknowledge the fact that as a Christian, I am to be consulting with God in every area of my life. I don't care if somebody might see it as, as very minimal. I, if it's down to the very thing that I wear, if it's down to the very thing that I say in conversations, if it's down to the very things that I might say and when I'm speaking or in a presentation, if I am not asking God and I am not seeking God about that thing, that means I am failing to honor him in that particular area of my life. I don't know about y'all, but as a believer, as a believer in Jesus Christ, as someone who says, God, I want you to have complete control over me, that means that I have to consult with him for the changes i can't just just make a resolution like everybody else can i can't just just sit down and create a goal off the whim like other people might be able to i can't do that not as a believer who wants to live a life that is completely submitted to jesus christ that means brothers and sisters whoever is listening to this i you know when when we do try to make these goals when we do try to make these changes when we do try to create these resolutions 
and we're not consulting with the changer, how can I be successful in that? How can I truly experience the change that he wants me to experience? We talked about that reconciliation piece. We talked about how we were constantly in the place of a uh, space of changing in order to be more and more like him. If I'm not consulting with him for any type of new year goal or any goal for that matter, how can I be successful in that thing? Holy Spirit, activate. I, I just felt like doing that in that moment. Sometimes we, we really have to call on the spirit of God to activate in these areas of our lives. I know it's, you know, a, a little funny little TikTok that went viral out of nowhere. But have y'all really ever sat down and asked the Holy Spirit just to, to activate, to, to begin to make changes in your life, to show you certain areas? Because when you experience that Holy Spirit activation, you won't start to feel weird when you leave God out of certain things. That's why you got to pray about who you're, you're dating, who you're hanging around, who you're communing with when the Holy Spirit is truly activated in you. I am literally nothing without Jesus. I can only be as successful without Jesus. I might have the vision to be a good, you know, employee in my mind. And that is my vision. That's my goal. But what if God has something different in mind? We talk about goal setting. And be, God being the foundation of the goal and seeking the changer in order to make lasting change. God is tired of being left out of your plans. God is tired of us making the plan and then we fail. We come, come crying back to God like, God, why I can't do this? Why this didn't work out? Did you include me in the first place? Was, why, why wasn't I ever included in this plan? I could have gave you the blueprint. Why didn't you consult with me? Why didn't you spend some time with me? Why didn't you fast in order to seek me? Why didn't you seek me before creating this goal? I feel as though if we were to give God more control in our lives without having to control everything, even down to my very career goals, we would eliminate a lot of emotional uh, mishaps and disturbances that we go through and disappointments in ourselves. I feel as though I probably would have saved a lot of money with business stuff and like plans and stuff if I had consulted with God first instead of just jumping into things. That comes out of a place of fear. That comes out of a place of just wanting to get things, wanting to get things going, being overly ambitious. Not seeking God first because I'm anxious about wanting just to get things done. Now, we can dress it up all we want. I know the DSM calls it anxiety. That's great. Uh, Dr. Gerald Jeffers. I remember when I was a, a kid, he talked about, you know, we can say all day anxiety or shyness or whatever. But it's really just a spirit of fear dressed up in a suit, no matter how you spin it. Once we acknowledge that a lot of the times that we're, we're trying to jump into these goals and make goals and it's rooted from a place of fear sometimes. We don't make goals out of fear. Some people might make a goal of, oh, I'm going to be married by the end of the year. Okay, that's, that's not a bad goal, but what is this rooted in? I would encourage you to reconsider it if it's rooted in fear of loneliness or fear of not having somebody around. Okay, I'm gonna make six figures by the end of the year. That's not a bad goal. It's not a bad goal at all. But is this rooted in the fear of lack of provision? Like what? what is this rooted in? The next time you go in your prayer closet, I'm gonna encourage you to ask yourself, what are my goals rooted in? If it's not foundationed in God, what's the point? Like, what's the point, sis? Like, we, we, we got better things to do than to make these arbitrary goals that get us absolutely nowhere in life all because we're fearful of something. We're going to talk about when you try to make changes without God, how that impacts us. Because my goal today, even if you, start, if you already started writing your resolutions or your New Year goals or how you're going to change in the New Year, if you've already started doing that, I want you to go back to your bedroom, go to that journal that you wrote them in, scratch it out. If you haven't sought God first, if you haven't sought God first, if you have not sought God 
for those goals. Those goals were made in vain. I'm sorry you wasted your time. I'm sorry that, you know, like it, it is what it is. You wasted your time. Why? I'm about to tell you. When you try to make change or make a goal without God, number one, you could be selling yourself short. You could be selling yourself short. What do you mean, Dr. Shonda? I'm so glad you asked. And what if you wanted to, if you had a goal in mind, but God had something so much more for you, but because you didn't seek God, you sold, you sold yourself short. What if you had the, the New Year goal or the resolution of, you know, I want to be a better teacher. I, I just want to be able to get my assignments done. I want to be able to have everything uploaded for my students. I want to be able to have do X, Y, and Z and everything else that's related to being a teacher. What if God says, well, I wanted you to be a principal. I wanted to elevate you to a superintendent status this year. We're selling ourselves short when we don't consult with God when it comes to our goals. And not saying that one is lesser than the other because I know plenty of great teachers out there, but there are different anointings. With every goal that you're trying to establish, there's a certain anointing that comes with that. The spirit of God that makes that particular thing easy. So if I'm asking to be a better teacher and God's giving me that teaching anointing, what if he wanted to give me that principalship anointing? That, that comes with administrative skills and being able to be, being able to be a problem solver. Uh, that's a whole different anointing. That's why we have to keep God at the forefront when we are asking for these, when we're setting our goals. We have to keep God at the forefront. Otherwise, you could be selling yourself short. Number two, when you try to make changes without God, you start to rely on your own strength. I don't know how many times we, we set these goals related to you know, let's use a fitness goal, for instance. I want to be a healthier person. Therefore, I'm going to try and stay in the gym three to five times a week. That's amazing. That's great. Now, if I were to be able to, you know, get up, wake up in the morning, six, seven o'clock in the morning, go to the gym, work out, blah, blah, blah. That's great. If you do that, amazing. Now, there are some of us who be tired in the morning. I'm one of them. Who, sometimes it's hard for us to get out of bed, especially when the coverage is warm and it's cold out. Like that brings you a different level of comfort. Me relying on my own strength would be setting myself up for failure. If I know I have a hard time in certain areas and I have this goal in mind, that means there are going to be some days where I just don't feel like going to the gym and I don't go. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Seriously, though, y'all pray for me because I'm, I'm trying to get consistent. If y'all follow my sister, you know she posts a gym picture every single day. I'm not that sis. Like, I, I that's not me. Well, I will get there in Jesus' name by the Spirit of God, but I'm just not there yet. I have not reached that point. When we talk about relying on our own strength, that means that if I'm not feeling like it, if I'm not feeling well, if I'm not feeling just, you know, like going to the gym at all, then my behavior is going to be contingent on how I feel. I'm relying on my own strength. My behavior is contingent on how I'm feeling at that time. Now, let me give you an example of what it's like to include God in that goal. If you were to set a health-related goal and you were to say, okay, I'm going to measure this goal by me going to the gym three to five times a week, just simply pray to God and ask him, Listen, God, I know this is my goal. I need your strength. What does the Bible say? The Bible says not by uh, might nor by power, but by your spirit, oh God. That means that when I rely on my own power, when I rely on my own might, when I rely on my own strength, I'm bound to fail. I can't remain strong in every situation. I can't remain consistent in every situation if I'm relying on myself. But when I'm relying on the spirit of God, when I'm relying on Jesus Christ, when I'm relying on his anointing, even on the days where I don't feel like going, the discipline that he gives me will allow me to get out of bed and to overcome those feelings and to go to the gym. And then afterward, you know what? I'm going to feel accomplished. Therefore, I can do it the next day. The discipline that God gives us in these areas by his spirit 
is the only way we'll be able to accomplish the things that we're trying to accomplish. Going to the days where we're trying to rely on our own strength. Going to the days where I'm trying to rely on, you know, well, I'm Dr. Shonda, therefore I could do X, Y, Z. No, sis, humble yourself. Bro, humble yourself. There is absolutely nothing that we can do by our own strength that God can't do supernaturally much greater. You're burning yourself out relying on your own strength. What if I were to tell you that if you were to rely on his anointing, if you were to rely on his anointing in order to get you to certain places and to, to overcome certain hurdles in life, in order to achieve certain goals, you wouldn't be burning yourself out. Maybe you're so burnt out right now because you haven't been relying on the spirit of God. I'm just trying to help you make your year easier. Don't blame me. Like, listen, this is all by the spirit of God. Um, and I can tell what I'm saying is hitting somebody. Anytime I'm out, like, speaking or preaching or whatever, and um, I feel the anointing, like, I know that what I'm saying right now is resonating with somebody. I have that feeling right now in this very moment. And I know that what I'm saying is resonating with you. And if you feel like this is resonating, I want you to ask God in this very moment. Pause the podcast if you need to. Ask God to allow you to rely on his spirit instead of us feeling like we can do it ourselves. And you know, that's one of the things I would say that's very specific to our population. And when I say our population, I'm meaning like, you know, people of color, especially black people. Um, we have this tendency to feel like we have to constantly be strong. The, the myth of the strong black man, the myth of the strong black woman has us so um and ingrained in us that we feel like we just got to keep it pushing we got to keep it moving no matter how burnt out i feel no matter how stressed out no matter how worn out no matter how ragged i am i'm going to keep pursuing that is not of god that is culturally instilled in us and that has been killing our people for centuries that is not of god it was never God's intention for us to rely on our own strength in situations where we are overwhelmed. If we are to rely on God, if we were to rely more on God, on those things that we feel are difficult, we feel are, are hard, we feel worn down, we feel burnt out. I promise you, this year will be a lot easier for you, bro. This year will be a lot easier for you, sis. It's a different level of peace that comes with relying on the spirit of God. That's why we have to seek the changer when we're running the change. We have, if we're saying that Jesus Christ is the only way for us to seek change and for us to experience lasting change, we have to seek Jesus Christ for his anointing in order for him to, for, in order for him to carry us through and to pursue these goals that we have for ourselves and to pursue these goals that he wants us to accomplish. Because at the end of the day, it's not about what I want. It's not about what my family wants, what my parents want. It's not about what anybody else wants. Am I doing this for him? Am I doing this for his glory? And if I'm doing it for his glory, God, you better give me some anointing to be able to do this. Y'all think this is easy being able to, you know, manage everything that I'm doing. I know that this is what he wants me to do. I know that this is my calling. Therefore, I rely on his spirit. The only reason I got where I am in life today is because I relied on God. I relied on the spirit of God. I relied on his anointing. I did not do anything by my own might. Any test that I had, I prayed over. Any essay that I had to turn in, I prayed over. I prayed before exams. I prayed after exams. I prayed before sending an email to teachers. I know for a fact that it is because of the spirit of God that I am where I am today. And this can be your testimony too if you include God in your New Year's goals. I cannot stress that enough. I cannot stress enough the fact that it is important for us to include the changer into the goal. We have to get over this spirit of arrogance that tells us we can do it on our own. How arrogant is that? I remember, the, the you know, just... One day, years ago, the spirit spoke to me. How arrogant can you be to think that you can do this on your own? That thing shook me. I was like, oh, okay, God, <laughs> let me make some changes. How arrogant can we be as creations of God not to seek the creator when we're trying to make change? How arrogant can we be? 
Number three, we are when we make when we try to make changes without God, we are not yielding ourselves completely to him. When we try to make changes without God, we are not yielding ourselves completely to him. Now, this is something we spoke about a little bit earlier in the podcast, but like I said before, y'all, anytime we try to make these types of goals, set resolutions for ourselves, and we are not seeking God, we're not seeking the changer before making the change, we're clearly indicating that we're not honoring God in that area of our lives. If I'm trying to make a financial goal, right? If I'm saying, again, using the example of six figures, if I'm saying, God, I want to make six figures this year, or, you know, not even including God. If I'm just writing the goal, I want to make six figures this year. I have my business plan laid out. I got everything laid out. I'm going to spend this amount of hours doing this. I'm going to do a course. I'm going to do a class. I'm going to do all these things. And I say, you know what? That's how I'm going to make my six figures. That is a clear indication that I'm not honoring God. Why? When did I sit and pray and ask God to give me discipline over the finances that he gives me? When did I sit and pray and ask God to, to breathe on my finances and allow them to flourish? When did I seek God to ask him, are there any changes that you want me to make in terms of my finances? Do you want me to give more? Should I be giving to charity more? Should I increase in my offerings? Should I, am I consistent in my tithes? God, if I'm not consistent in these areas, bring this out to me. That is the blueprint. God gives us the, when we seek God, he gives us the blueprint on how to be successful with these goals. It's one thing to be able to make six figures. It's another thing to be able to ask God, how can I be more improved? How can I be more abundant in my finances and allow him to give you the strategy? Because that is lasting change. You might be able to make six figures on your own this year with your own financial goals. But what about the years to come, if you ask God, he will give you the strategy to make six figures th this year, maybe seven figures the next year, and still having a flourishing business while you do it. God will give you the blueprint to be successful. That is why we have to be uh, cognizant and in, in, in including him and allowing him to be the foundation of the very changes that we're trying to make in life. I see it time and time again, y'all. I promise you I do. Where people try to make changes for themselves and they say, Dr. Shonda, I don't know what's going on. I just don't have the discipline to be able to do it. I don't have the discipline. There is no cure for discipline. There is no therapeutic modality that I can say, okay, you're going to do this, this, and this in order to improve your discipline. That's a God thing. That's a God thing. That's something we should be seeking God for. That is something that we, that's an anointing that we can seek God for, especially if I'm trying to make these changes in my life. Now, overall... I want you to take these three points and I want you to apply them while we are transitioning out of this year and entering into the new year, 2022. I feel as though this year is going to be a dynamic year for so many people. If we learn to center God, put God in the center of everything. Put God in the center of the goals that you have with relationships. I want a better relationship with my mom. Okay. Did you see God about that? I want a, a, a better business plan. I want to be able to flourish in my entrepreneurial ventures. Cool. Have you sought God? Are we seeking God? Consult with God. Seek the changer in order to get lasting change. Seek the one who can make you new. Seek the one who can create the lasting change. Seek the one who can reconcile you, not just from the outside, not just behaviorally, but from the soul. Sometimes we don't recognize that when we're trying to make those changes and we have obstacle after obstacle after obstacle, a lot of times the enemy already knows what our downfalls are. If you have a financial goal, the enemy knows that, you know, you, you have a spending habit that you, you haven't gotten under control yet. Therefore, he's going to create traps for you. But if I were to seek God, if I were to seek God and say, God, I need your strength with this thing. I need your help with this. I need you to give me the blueprint. Then and only then we will be able to accomplish those things, overcome those challenges and to pursue and to seek the goals that we have. And transitioning into our Ask Dr. Shonda segment, y'all. So I had an amazing question that someone asked me via DM. 
um, the question was basically about how do you know when it's time to seek therapy? Uh, basically, someone saying that they had trouble with their mental health for many years and they're trying to figure out if it's time to seek therapy. Um, you know, I always say, and again, thank you so much for submitting your question via DM. Again, allow these questions to keep rolling in. I love and appreciate you guys when you ask me questions. Um, you know, I often say if, it, if you're asking yourself, is it time to go to a therapist? Then it is. Uh, you're the best, the best um, assessor of that. You're the best evaluator of uh, your own need for therapy. And even if you don't have to stay in therapy for a long time, if you find that, you know, you're in therapy, you got your goals accomplished in about two, three sessions, that's fine. You don't have to stay there forever. But it is something I encourage you to do if that's something you're questioning yourself about. So I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, you can always shoot me another DM. Lastly, Dr. Rafia and I are relaunching the Black Women's Therapy Group. If you are interested, please let me know uh, via my DM. I would love to have a group consultation with you in order to help us help you uh, get through that process. Don't forget, you have the power to create the emotions that you want to experience. Love and appreciate each and every one of you.